right, here we go. Remember the classes today. I'm going movies, y'all. I'm going movies. I'm taking you to June 8th, 1984. They released the movie B Street, man. B Street. It was the third, actually, a third hip-hop movie to be released. Wild Style and Breaking. It was supposed to be the second, but the guy who owned <laughs> Cannon Films, who ran Breaking, was like, what? That's what they're doing? We're doing one of those movies. It's coming out, it's coming out in June. We're, our movie coming out in May. They ain't had May yet, but Breaking was number two. I love the movie. It was set in um, the South Bronx. The movie covered all elements of hip-hop. I mean, graffiti, breakdancing, DJing, and rappers. We used to watch that on Betamax all the time. For some reason, we had the original copy. Like, they got, like normally you would get them and you, you record them from the VHS, the two videos. But no, we actually had a, a real copy of this movie. Let me see if I remember the characters. You had Double K, you had Ramon, you had Charlie, you had Lee, you had Miss Kirkland, you had the New York City Breakers, you had the Rocksteady Crew, you had Treacherous Three, you had Louise, Dougie Fresh was in there, Us Girls was in there, Africa Ben Bottle was there, Grandmaster Melly Mel, and the Furious Five was there. Uh, my man, dude that played Robert, the old dude, I just looked that up. That's the dude from uh, the Night of the Living Dead. He was the black guy who lived. His name was D Dwayne Jones. I'm like, wait a minute, he was in B Street? That's crazy. The only thing I didn't like about the film, who was the white Puerto Rican guy? I don't know who the hell. He had nothing to do with the movie. Like, they probably quoted like, yo, it's too much, too much color. Throw him in there. <laughs> like, you know how they do it. They said they couldn't do Coming to America unless they had a white comedian and they threw um, Louis Anderson in. But the dude, dude had no no relevance at all. I, I think he, only thing he did was eat a can. That's all he did, eat a can and hung out with him and lived in an abandoned building. I don't know what that meant. That director was my man, Stan Lake. So whenever I meet Stan Lake, I'm like, who was the dude in B Street, man? For real. Like, yo, I know y'all out there. Introduce me to your daughter later. What was that dude in B Street? Favorite scenes, man. Favorite scenes. Like, come on, favorite scenes. The top of the movie was a favorite scene. When they, after they did the credits, they went right to it. They showed you what the movie was about without even saying nothing. They showed Ramon doing some graffiti in his book. Uh, Double K putting the records in there, meaning DJ. You had Lee put on his Pumas with the fat laces. Then he did a backspin. I'm like, that's what the movie was about without even saying anything. Thought that was incredible, man. Then they went to the party. Went to the party of in the abandoned building. It's working. It's working. Party people, if you're ready to rock, let me hear you scream. If you really, really came to party, then let me hit everybody. I love how they rap back then. They made sure that you got all them damn, they, they, they diction was on point. They did everybody. Then we came to party like, yeah. The bottom at the Roxy, come on, man. I remember going to see that, the movie that, that and breaking together. I went to the bathroom. When they were like, Bronx Rockers, Jesus. So I'm thinking I'm going to go to the bathroom and come back. For some reason, this movie theater was packed. And they would not let me back in to see it. It finally cleared up when it was over. So I had to watch it when we got it on video. The iconic scene, B Street Breakers against um, Bronx Rockers, a.k.a. Um, New York City Breakers against um, Rocksteady Crew. Amazing. They go to the burning spill. With, uh, you saw the treacherous three, Kumo D and his, his guys, man. The Dougie Fresh pops in there, the Christmas song. Ho, ho, ho. I talked about that on one of the other episodes. That scene. Then you go back to the break dances again. They're in the subway. They walk through. Yo, 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 chill out, man. I hear something. They walk up like. Back to cry. Let's do the right thing. Let's serve these dudes, man. Ah! Well, I hear a lot of hip hoppers say they hated the movie, but they love. Melly Mel doing the B Street song at the end. To hear the song, man, it was like the message part two. <laughs> I'm like, this dude comes out. <laughs> da, da, da. Man, he used to wear those crazy clothes, man. But hey, man, he he was killing it, yo. He, he had a verse in there, man. He said, sight unseen, voices unheard. Finally, the bomb gets the last word. <laughs> Lyrics and bars. Come on, Melly Mel. Sight unseen, voices unheard. Finally, the bomb gets the last word. <clears throat> Classic film, man. One of my favorite films to watch. When I say, I'm going to have different categories, like best films and favorite films to watch. That is one of my favorite films to watch. As a kid, it showed me kind of how New York was. I've been in New York once in my life, but then I'm like, yo, I get the vibe of it, man. They made, they show you where hip-hop came from. They gave you a nice mixture of all the elements of hip-hop, graffiti, breakdancing, DJing, and rapping. Black folks, man, I, I, I gotta say this, I know it. We're the best of making something out of nothing. And that's what this movie was. You saw them at the top of the film where they had made their own party. 
They may have an abandoned building, maybe stole some lights and put, man, I appreciate that film, man. Yo, it's definitely a classic in my eyes, man. So, B Street Breakdown, B Street. Next segment.